Navigating Nonfiction. Today, we're going to continue learning more about penguins by reading another nonfiction text about these amazing creatures. As we've already discussed, one of the first things that we have to do when reading nonfiction is activate our prior knowledge about the topic. So let's begin today by revisiting the organizer that we filled out on the previous lesson, A Reader's Puzzle. Let's revisit this organizer and take a look at what we've already learned and discussed and new questions that we've developed from Penguins on Parade. Here are some of the new facts and questions that I developed after reading about penguins yesterday. Let's discuss some of the items you found and questions you have as well. Now that we've activated our prior knowledge, we're going to tour the text. What you'll need today is the text that looks like this. It's called Penguins Are at Home. You'll find this in your school-wide notebook or your packet of shared texts. You'll also need... You'll also need this Touring the Text Organizer, which can be found in your school-wide notebook. And, of course, a pencil. In our last lesson, we spent time activating our prior knowledge on this topic and developing new knowledge. Today, we will tour the text of the new passage we're going to read, which means we're going to notice all the different text features used in the article. And we're going to use those features to prepare us to read the rest of the article. Let's take a look. What kind of features do you notice? I'll give you a moment to look. We'll pause here and then discuss. I notice images or illustrations and captions. And another text feature I noticed was bold print. I really like the image at the bottom of this page because it helps me visualize what penguins look like and what their natural surroundings are. Are there any images that stand out to you? We can also take a look at the next page of this article. After looking at this page, are there any images or text features that really stand out to you? Let's add some of the text features we've found to our Touring the Text organizer in your school-wide notebook. Since there are so many images, I think we should add images first. Let's stop and discuss while looking at the text to see what these images really tell us. I found that these images really help me to see the look of penguins and what their surrounding environment looks like. That's very helpful to my understanding of what we'll be reading about the penguins. Feel free to add more details if you have them. Let's continue. Speaking of captions, I noticed there's a lot more captions than there are any other main sections of the text. That is quite a bit of captions, wouldn't you say? Let's read through these captions and see if we can find anything else about penguins that we didn't already know. Let's look at this first one here. The black and white suit of a penguin is more than just cute. It helps to hide the penguin from predators when it's swimming in the ocean. When a penguin is swimming near the surface, its white underside makes it hard for leopard seals or other predators below the penguin to see it. This is very interesting, and some of this information is already a part of what we learned yesterday or in the previous lesson. Moving over here, this caption next to the bullet point, which is also another text feature, says, like all animals, penguins need water to drink, but when they are at sea, the only water they can get is salt water. For this reason, they have special glands that remove salt water from the water they drink. The salt is removed in a liquid form. It flows down grooves in a penguin's beak and drops off the end. Wow, I never knew that. That's very interesting. If I didn't read this caption, I would have missed that. This caption here says, The white underside of the penguin blends with the bright light coming from above, as shown above. I do remember reading this in our previous lesson. And finally, the last caption on this page says, Penguins are wonderful long-distance swimmers. They often travel in large groups as they swim. They pop out of the water to gulp air and then plunge back in again. By doing this, they can get the air they need without slowing down. This kind of swimming is called porpoising because porpoises swim in a similar way. Wow, I didn't know that either. Very interesting. Let's add captions to our Touring the Text organizer. And let's think about what we've learned from the captions we read on the last page. 
this is what I wrote down. The captions helped me to see how penguins swim and understand it better because the captions explained the images. I also felt that special glands to remove salt from water was very interesting, and I wrote this caption down as well. Leopard seals hunting penguins um, was very important to me as well, but I also learned that penguins can swim faster when they're healthy. So all this information really helps me to understand the text. Let's take a look at the top section of this passage where it says penguins are at home. These first couple words are in bold. I think that that bold print is going to tell us they're important. These are also the only words in the text that are bold, so I'm thinking they're probably important. What do you think? Let's read these two paragraphs here, the body of the text. Penguins are at home in the ocean. They spend most of their time in the water looking for food, and they seem to feel much more comfortable in the water than they do on land. Some penguins stay close to the shore and never swim too far from their breeding colonies. They fish during the day and come back to the shore every night. Other species may take long journeys across the open ocean. They even sleep in the water. Some kinds of crested penguins may stay at sea for five months or more. They may swim thousands of miles and never come within sight of land the whole time. There are so many neat facts I've learned about penguins. They really are amazing creatures. Now that I've read this section, I want to go back to the bold words. What do you think the function of these bold words, penguins are at home, is in this text? In other words, what is the purpose? Take a moment. Let's discuss. Something I know about bold words is that they often tell us what the main idea of the section is or they introduce the section. Let's add that to our Touring the Text organizer. Okay, and here I just wrote that they introduce the section or the main idea of a text. Turn your papers over or your articles over and I'm going to have you read the back side of this article on your own or with a partner and then we'll come together and share how the text features helped us and come back to talk about what we've learned. Great job today. Today we practice touring the text. Today when we practice touring the text, we really paid particular attention to text features. Touring the text is important to readers of nonfiction because it helps us notice features and clues that prepare us for reading about a specific subject. Great work and continue your investigative skills to be better nonfiction reading experts.